centroid by integrating it or by using the method of composite bodies. And you need to be able to know how to do both. In both cases, we're starting with this general notion of balancing the moments. So when we balance a pencil on either side, you've got the sum of the weight times its distance, the sum of the weight times its distance. And if you solve for where that equivalent point load acts, you get this. Just like we did with the integrals, I can divide out the gravity, which is the same on both sides, divide out whatever depth into the page I would have on both sides, and get a centroid formula for a discrete area. I want to use this notion of a discrete area to apply to any area that is built up of composite areas, or composite bodies. So this is one rectangle on the left and one rectangle on the right. If I think about it broken right here, you in fact have a 9 by 2 rectangle and a 3 by 2 rectangle. Think about boiling the whole area on the left down to as if it acted at one spot. The spot where it acts is the, its own centroid. So the centroid of a rectangle is in the middle. The middle here would be 1 centimeter up and half of 9 up. So I want to put that whole area sort of acting at a single point. I want to put this whole area, this 6 centimeters squared, acting at its centroid. But I want to make sure that I'm using the coordinates for the centroid. So that dot right there, the coordinates for that isn't 3 over 2, it's 2 plus 3 over 2. And this would be all the way up, not at 9, but at 8. These coordinates are what I sort of want to average. It's kind of like a weighted average, if you would, of where the area is. So if you were looking for a center of gravity, where would I hook that green piece? This formula tells me that I can take 1 times 18 and 3 and a half times 6, divide by 18 plus 6, and get 1.65. My y bar is very similar. I'm going to take that whole 18 acting at 9 over 2, this whole 6 acting at 8, and divide by 18 plus 6, I get 5.375. At this point, you always want to stop and say, where is this point I just found? 1.625 and 5.375. If I plot that, it looks really yeah, somewhere around around in there. Is that a reasonable spot for the center of gravity of that metal plate, if that's what it was? And that seems, seems very reasonable. It's more than halfway up the left rectangle and not quite as far over as this little bit. So, if that's the composite bodies, what if we, normally we're going to put that in a chart because it's just easier to keep track of. Especially as you get more and more composite bodies, it's easier to figure out what you're adding together. X bar and Y bar are the coordinates for the centroid of each of your composite bodies. A is just the area. And then now to find X bar A, I'm just going to multiply the columns. X bar and A. This is going to be that column times A. Sum the columns down and you get some of the A's, some of the X bar A's, and some of the Y bar A's, and that goes right into your formula here. One of the things you will see, though, is that you're going to need to be able to find the coordinates for the centroid of your common shapes. So, what common shapes do you need to know? If you look around your, the place that you're in right now, you will see rectangular things, maybe some triangular things, maybe some circular things or semicircular things, but a vast majority of the stuff we build with, I means, et cetera, et cetera, is built up out of these basic shapes. So where are the centroids of these basic shapes? Well, the rectangle and the circle are in the middle. The triangle is going to be a third of the way from the big end. That's how I, I remember this. So wherever your right triangle is, it's a third of the way. If you have a not right triangle, you can find it by bisecting the sides, and it's the point where it comes in. That is not something you really need to worry about very often. This one is very common. The semicircle is halfway over this way because it's symmetric. Remember that as any centroid lies on a, on a, if there is a line of symmetry, the centroid has to lie on that line of symmetry. The height here, you just have to memorize. It's 4r over 3 pi, and that's just something you need to know. Where do you find the others? You look them up in a chart. Uh, Wikipedia has lots of charts. There are Google does. You can always type it into a search engine and you will find the centroid for whatever common shape you're looking for. So if we want to look at this particular shape, this is a green plate 
It's got a rectangular base, a semicircular top, and a triangular hole cut out of it. What do you do with a hole? Here's my chart. The coordinates for the centroid of each of my pieces are going to go in these first two columns. So my 14 by 2, that's this bottom rectangle, its centroid lies in the middle of the rectangle. So that would be 14 over 2 is 7 up over and 1 up. That one's good. The triangle will be a third of the way from the big end. So if I'm looking for the x bar coordinate of that triangle, it's like 7 over and if this is 1, then that triangle is 6 by 3. So a third of the way over would be 2 over from the middle, gives me 5. And a third of the way up would be 1 up. But remember, I'm looking for a coordinate. So I'm going to have to go 2 up and 1 more up, it gives me 3. The semicircle, it's cent the centroid of that semicircle is over at 7. And then up, not just pi over 3, 4 r over 3 pi but 4 over 3 pi plus this 2 millimeter offset at the bottom. So these numbers go in the charts here. The area is just the area of each of your pieces. Bearing in mind that if you have a hole, the area is negative. So that's negative. When I multiply this all out, what I end up with here is 7.19 and 4. And if you plot that, you're just over halfway and just about right about here. And that seems very reasonable. So, main things to keep in mind, you're going to use these very self-same formulas that we've had, and it looks just like the kind of balancing the pencil that we did at the very beginning of centroids. These x bar and y bar are the coordinates for the centroids of each of your pieces. The a is the area of each of your pieces, and what you end up with is the centroid of your entire structure. It's kind of like a weighted average if that helps you think about it. You need to memorize the centroids for rectangles, circles, triangles, and semicircles, and the rest of them you'll look up.